Hey, intrepid viewers, and welcome back to Wander No More. After Chio grabbed a basket to fill with food, the two of us entered the forest. Despite knowing the path, I followed Chio as she led the way, trailing close behind while silently smiling to myself. In truth, there was no reason for me to be smiling. I was quickly becoming alienated, arguing with my daughter, and aware of an imminent threat on the village. Nonetheless, when I watched Chio once again joyful and full of life, once again joyful and full of life, I couldn't help but smile. While I dislike arguing with Chio, in this case, our heated exchange seems to have done some good. Yesterday, Chio would barely speak to me. Now we're strolling through the forest together. I'm not sure what these parentheses mean. Um, because there's not, like, any text that they're distinguishing themselves from. And if the portrait of the guy is not here, I just assume it's internal anyway, which is what I think it's trying to communicate. I don't know. Apparently, a bit of communication was just what we needed. Chio and I avoided parts of the forest in which the boys and I had laid traps. We had set traps further into the forest than we were hunting, and we made them large enough to snare an adult male. With that in mind, Chio and I remained vigilant, careful not to get skewered by our own protection. Okay, we're almost at the river. You remember the way from here, don't you? I do indeed. Thank you for guiding me this far. My pleasure. I'll be close by, so just call it when you're done. Will do. Don't stick too close by, though. I'm actually quite shy, you know. Of course. I'll make sure to- But wait, what was that? Don't be ashamed. I know you've peeped on me while I was bathing before, but you're too old to bathe with Papa, so please refrain from doing so. Dang it, anime. Are you insane? I never tried to peep on you. If anything, you were the one trying to peep on me. That's not how I remember it. Obviously, your memory is deteriorating in your old age, you perverted geezer. Ouch. Who are you calling an old geezer? I'm only 24, you know. Then at your age, shut your mouth and wash the sweat from your body. Call for me when you're done, and you'd better be fully clothed. Tired of our banter, Chio walked in the opposite direction of the river. She didn't stop, nor did she cast another glance my way. I was on my own once more, and until I had finished bathing, Chio would not grace my sight. What a creep! What a protagonist. Taking the time to thoroughly clean my body, I wound up bathing for far longer than planned. Occupied with the drama invading Hatsu Village, I hadn't been bathing as often as I should, so I was overdue for a proper cleaning. More so than that, however, I simply wanted to take the chance to think everything through, free of any distractions. See, so that wasn't in parentheses, now this is. If there's one thing that hasn't changed between my life in the city and my life in Hatsu Village, it's that a bath is the best place to forget your worries. I did not click anything. I mean, I did, but... Alone, floating in the water, away from any of the strife that plagues you amid your daily life. Whether you're in a bathtub or drifting down a river, the feeling of freedom does not change. However, for some reason I had a picture of somebody, like, tied in a barrel floating in the river, like, I'm free! However, now that I've had the time to clear my head, I realize that there is work to be done. First, as Chio insisted, I must speak to the Kihai boys, whether I was right or wrong. I must make amends, lest they disobey my orders and get themselves killed. I want them to obey my orders when they get themselves killed. Next time, I will speak- next I will speak to the villagers, one by one, and take the time to personally explain our predicament, who the Katakushi are, and what to expect. Finally, I will organize rotating surveillance teams, such that we will see the enemy coming, no matter when, or from what direction. Chiyoshan, I'm out of the bath now. Feeling like a great weight had been lifted from my shoulders, I gleefully called out to Chio, who was foraging close by. k k k what's wrong? Did you slip and hit your head? Oh, don't be like that. I was just calling out to my precious daughter. With honorifics and an infantile tone? Well, you always used to complain when I just called you Chio, and my voice is... Don't explain, just act like your usual creepy self. Ouch again. First I was a perverted geezer, now I'm a creep. Well, neither points are wrong. I'm getting quite the bad reputation here. Well, deservedly, I would point out. All right, all right, creepy coup it is. So scrounge up something interesting for lunch? Interesting might not be the word for it, but you'll definitely be able to eat your fill. I've got persimmons, apples, pears, you name it. Prompted by Chio's claim, I looked down into the basket at her feet. That's quite the haul. You really work hard for Papa's sake. God dang it! Who said this was for your sake? I'm not going to starve, start starving myself. Besides, I wanted to make sure we had enough for dinner, too. It's not like I gathered more than usual. Chio hurriedly denied my accusation. Her face flushed the entire time. No matter how long we spent together, Chia would never admit to doing something for my sake. And thanks to my teasing, whenever she did, that was unlikely to ever change. Okay, okay, I understand. Let's head back to the village and eat lunch together. I'm famished. Me too. I haven't been foraging as much these past few days, so I could really use a sizable meal. And maybe after we eat, you can... Dot 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 dot... Apologize? 
Very subtle, Chio. But don't worry, while I won't take back what I said, I will apologize for the manner in which I spoke. I want to get along with everyone just as much as you do. I knew you'd come around. Make sure to tell when you go make sure to tell me when you go to apologize. I want to see Ku on his hands and knees begging for forgiveness. I'm not that sorry. Creepy indeed. As Chiu and I encroached upon Hatsu Village, the forest's usual ambience suddenly died off. Although nothing appeared to be amiss, I could feel something strange in the air. A disturbance I couldn't quite put my finger on, as if a thousand souls had suddenly been snuffed out. Something about the forest had changed, if not physically, then in a more discreet manner. I looked over at Chio, who walked along as happily as ever. If she noticed something too, she wasn't letting on. Chio simply continued to stroll through the forest without a care in the world. But Chio's behavior was not enough to convince me that I was wrong, nor was I about to pin my hopes on her ability to sense danger. We're nearing the village now. If there is danger afoot, it mightn't be necessarily be in the forest. But the only danger that comes to mind is what I've been preparing for, an assault by the Karakushi. I couldn't see any sign of them in the distance, as, as I looked towards Mirai earlier, and I haven't been in the forest long enough for such a distance to be covered. Could the threat be... Internal? None of the villagers were violent or unpredictable. The likelihood of one of them posing a threat or lashing out was minimal. I wonder how he measures the predictability of... Villagers. Nonetheless, there were four blades in my home, not to, mention, not to mention the tools I use on a daily basis. If someone were to snap under pressure, violence may be imminent. Ku, are you feeling alright? You've been quiet for a while now. I looked down at Chio, uncertain how best to answer her question. Honestly, I'm not sure. Chio, does something feel... Off to you? Off? What do you mean? I don't know. I suppose it's a sense of impending danger. Where's the batter? Samurai was trained, are trained to sleep with one eye open. One eye? Figuratively speaking. We have a keen sense for when something is awry. Are you sure you aren't just being paranoid? There's no danger around here. We all... <sniffs> Chio stopped mid-sentence and began to sniff the air. I followed suit, paying more attention to the scent than I had before. And the moment I did, a horribly familiar scene played out before me. The Great Toast Disaster of 92. Hatsu Village, in flames once more. The moment Chio spied the village, she dropped the basket in her hands and stared blankly at the flames. She froze. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I assume we moved to see the fire. I just thought it's like, oh, fire! We smelled it before we saw it! She froze, completely devastated, as she watched history repeat itself. Chio, go back to the forest. Do not come out until I say so. I took charge immediately, but Chio remained despondent. The sight of indomitable flames taking away her home and her friends was too much for her to bear. Chio, back in the forest, now. What? As I shouted at her, Chio finally snapped out of her daze. Her hand shook, and she looked from side to side, trying to find at least one villager. However, the only bodies we could see were corpses, torn to shreds without any hope of survival. This... this can't be happening. Not again, I can't... Chio, listen to me. I can't... I, I can't... I can't watch this happen again! At long last, Chio ran off. However, rather than return to the forest, Chio headed straight into the village towards the Kihai home. Damn it, Chio, this is not the time! Without waiting a second, I quickly followed after Chio. Do I have my weapons with me? Usually, I would outrun her with ease, but after, tr but after training all morning, I was no longer- I no longer possessed such speed. All I could do was run, praying that I'd find her before the Katakushi. Well, run and pray, apparently. Those bastards, the second I leave the village, they'd strike. They must have been watching me, waiting for the perfect time to invade. They were afraid of one man. And in the time I was gone, every one of the villagers was... As I approached the Kihai home, I grimaced at the sight of two painfully familiar corpses. Azai and Araki, each wielding one of my blades. The moment the Kotakushi struck, those two headed straight for my home, the home of Kuichirusana, the village leader, the person whose job it was to protect them. And when they couldn't find me... They took the matter into their own hands. Filled with both sadness and anger, I took my katana and wakazashi from the two boys. I bit my lips so hard I could feel the blood running down my face, meanwhile clenching each blade tighter than ever before. This kind of senseless daughter is exactly why I left the katakushi in the first place. I left to get away from the bloodshed, to escape the role of a remorseless killer. But now that it's come to this, I... Could you help? As rage and regret threatened to consume me, a lone voice dragged me back. I had turned in the direction from which the voice came, and the moment I did, I realized that my initial fear had been realized. Ooh, new people. Sideways people. Itao. Did we give Itao a name? 
We see Christopher Walken. We gave somebody Walken, didn't we? Or did we not yet? We can make him Walken. Oh, ho, oh, ho, ho, look at who we have here. I heard you were seeking refuge in this village, but I never thought I'd actually find you. Ito? I dashed towards Chio's voice the moment she cried out, unaware of the absurd sight waiting for me. Dressed in the same outfit I had worn last year, that of the captain of the Kotakushi was Ito, my childhood friend and rival. So, you remember me after all? It's been so long that I feared you might have forgotten me. Thankfully, that appears not to be the case. As I drew closer, Ito tightened his grip, bringing the edge of his katana an inch away from Chio's throat. Ah, 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 you don't want the last remaining citizen of this village to be beheaded, do you? Or it could be that you've finally taken a liking to the killing children. Your town smirked arrogantly, knowing well that I wouldn't want the death of an innocent bystander to hang over my head. Just kidding. I know you aren't like that. That's why you quit in the first place, right? Because you didn't have the stones for it anymore. Such a shame. You always possess so much skill, yet never properly apply yourself to the job. Not that I'm complaining, your betrayal just gave me one more chance to show everyone that I'm your superior. I suddenly glared at Ito, contemplating my next move. I couldn't risk harming Chio, but at the same time I realized that doing nothing was not an option. I needed to bide time until an opening presented itself. What's wrong? Ko, you scared you can't talk? How embarrassing! The former captain of the Kotakoshi has been reduced to a simple villager. Is this why you left Mirai? So you could live among other weaklings like yourself and... Stop listening to him, Ku! You aren't a weakling, you're the strongest person I've ever known! But strength is meaningless if you don't use it! You said you would protect us, right? Then stop listening to him and do something, Ku! Caught off guard, Ital looked down at Chio for a moment. He then looked back at me with the same disgusting smirk plastered on his face. Heh, you may not have forgotten about me, but it does sound like you've already forgotten. You've already gotten over Haruka. It hasn't even been a year and a half, yet you've already moved on from the death of your wife. Ku, please, don't just stand there. Wait, what wife? <laughs> please, I already told you I don't want to die. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Haruka must be turning in her grave, watching her husband screw a little girl every night. Is it true that younger is better? I've always wondered, but never actually gotten around to seeing for myself. Why aren't you doing anything? Please, Kurcho, do something! How does this girl compare to Haruka? When the lights go out, do you pretend she's still with you? Kurcho! Silence. Wing wing, what? That's pretty badass, actually. Ah, oh, I didn't mean to click save, but we'll save. Why the heck not? This. Tense moment, we'll take the time to see. Ito and Chio both stared in amazement. Unable to follow my movements, they instantaneously cut down all of Ito's men. Their bodies fell to the floor without a sound, sliced open with cuts too fine to be made by a human. Then who did it? Not me? Or am I not, am I not human? Ah, uh, questions. It wasn't until after their bodies fell apart that the blood escaped their corpses, pooling on the ground around Ito's feet. K k k ku after my display, Chio was the first to speak up. She looked at me with wide eyes, unable to believe what I had just done. But Chio was not the target of my focus. Not yet. Ito. Ha! Ito jumped as I spoke his name. My voice was low and filled with malice, so much so that I surprised even myself. Do you really think that a surprise attack and a hostage would be enough to take me out? I took a step towards Ito. How foolish. What was it you called yourself before? My... superior? I took another step forward, readying my blade. Ridiculous. Surely you don't believe that. I don't care how long it's been. I have always been without equal. You were just too arrogant to accept it. I raised my blade, pointing it at over Chio's shoulder and directly at Itao's face. You should have just left me here to live out my days in peace. Now, prepare yourself. By the time I had finished speaking, Ita's expression had turned from one of surprise to that of pure terror. His hands shook, and it seemed as though he would drop his blade at any second. No, no, you wouldn't! You wouldn't kill me! I'm your best friend, your only friend! 
My unchanging expression told Itau how little impact his words were having. Please, just... I'll leave, okay? I'll go back to Mirai and tell them you died in battle. How pathetic. Where did your confidence from a moment ago disappear to, Itau? You brazenly insulted me, mocked Haru's death, insinuated that I would defile a young girl, and now you suddenly beg for forgiveness. Burn in hell, my best friend. I pulled my blade back and stepped forward, carefully maneuvering around Chio as I... Wait a minute! A split second before I could pierce Itau's throat, Chio shut it out. I rested my blade on Itau's shoulder, not taking my eyes off him for a moment as I questioned Chio's command. What is it, Chio? Can't you see that I'm a little in the middle? Can't you see that I'm in the middle of something? I spoke to Chio in a cold yet non-aggressive tone. Though she tried to hide it, I could see that Chio was already frightened, both by the village-wide slaughter and the Kirichiro she thought she knew. So for her sake, if only for a moment, I showed an ounce of control. Ku, I um, you, you shouldn't. Chio fumbled to find the right words. She twitched nervously. You shouldn't kill your friend. I shifted my gaze away from Itau for a moment. Chio, though frightened, appeared to be fairly calm, making her words carry slightly more weight. Nonetheless, I could only stare at her in confusion, completely incapable of understanding her plea. This is not my friend. Are you insane? L listen to the girl, Ku, you don't want to do this. Ignoring Itau's desperate shriek, I prompted Chio once more. Chio, this man just slaughtered the, our entire village. The day when we met, he did the exact same thing. He may very well be the man who killed your parents. Give me one good reason why I shouldn't end his very existence. Chio let a brief sigh, as though she had hoped I'd ask that very question. It's just like my father once told me. Life is precious, Chio, and preserving life is something you should never feel bad about. I opened my eyes wide in shock, completely unprepared for what I had just heard. Chio immediately gained my full attention, and in doing so... Allowed Itau to escape. God dang it, Chio! Taking advantage of my close proximity, Itau shoved Chio into my arms, then ran for his life. Right into a trap, probably. But rather than give chase, I felt content to hold Chio in my arms, still staring at her in amazement. The young girl from back then, who extended me with her strong will to live, once again proved worthy of praise. Talking someone down when they're prepared to kill is not easy. It requires delicacy and precise knowledge of the would-be killer. Despite that, Chio, a girl who showed me nothing but fear moments prior, was able to pull it off without the slightest hint of difficulty. Once again, Chio has shown me how truly amazing she is. As Itau fled and our village burned down, Chio returned my blank stare with a smile. Come on, Ku, there's no time to waste. It may be too late to save the villagers, but we can at least stop the fire. Yes, I suppose you are right. I don't know how much of the village we'll be able to save, but let's do what we can. And when we're done, we shall rebuild our lives once more. And scene! Is that the whole game? Yep, that was the whole game. That's a weird ending. That's not quite what I expected. That's good, though. I mean, that was a good length. Um, and actually, it's probably good that was unexpected and not quite like a boilerplate story. Definitely very good for a free game. Were it not free, it would be cool... Ooh, Renpai, nice. It would be cool to have, um... Slightly more art? But obviously that's very expensive. Oh? Oh, epilogue? As Hatsu Village burned to the ground, Chio and I had a decision to make. Her home, and more recently mine, could only be rebuilt so many times. Further to that, the Karakushi, and thus the Mirai Kingdom, knew where to find us, making the village a def definite target. If we chose to embrace the familiarity of Hatsu, we would eventually be hunted down. On the other hand, we could only wander for so long. The food and water we could carry from the forest was not without limit, and neither one of us knew where we might find another habitable village. Leaving Hatsu, though certainly a wise choice, would not guarantee us salvation. Instead, the gamble might leave us without supplies in the middle of nowhere or trapped in an enemy village. Even knowing this, Chio and I ultimately decided to take the horse of one of the fallen samurai. Why not each take your horse? We headed in the opposite direction of Mirai, towards the kingdom I once opposed. A kingdom in which we could find protection from the Kotakushi, knowing that even they wouldn't dare tread in such a place. I'm still not sure about this. 
Will they really take us in? I've never been this far away from Mirai before. Quit worrying, Ku. This isn't the Mirai Kingdom we're talking about. Not everyone settles a dispute with swords, you know. True enough, while Mirai was seemingly set on expansion, the kingdom we were traveling towards possessed no such goal. Not once had I heard of them burning down villages or extorting resources from others. Despite their military might, the kingdom opposing Mirai appeared a val to value peace. Be that as it may, we have no way of knowing whether we'll be accepted or not. What will we do if they turn us away? They won't turn us away. Even Hatsu occasionally traded with other villages. If we tell them that Mirai wiped out our village, they'll definitely take us in. Just don't tell them that you were the captain of the Katakushi, okay? <laughs> of course, even I wouldn't say something that tactless. Laughing at Chio's optimism and humble plea, my mood picked back up. Worried though I may be, I knew that Chio was right, and we had already come too far to turn back. Worry not, when we arrive, I'll tell them who I am, not who I once was. I am Kuichiro Ayasi, a wandering samurai hunted by the Mirai Kingdom who seeks nothing more than refuge for his beloved daughter. And she stayed daughter. Cool, well that's Wander No More. Let me know what you thought. I love to I love to hear opinions. This is um I'm trying to think if I've done anything quite this linear before. This is might be this might be uncharted territory for the channel. I mean, I've done very linear games before. Yeah, I think I think this is the most linear. So let me know if you liked that or not. Um, if you like, I I had fun reading this. Don't know if it made fun watchability ness. So let me know. And thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys in whatever game I do next. Signature catchphrase.